calcium carbonate is reacting with excess dilute hydrochloric acid right and then that is used to investigate one of the factors that affect reaction rate and then we have some balance equation right and then it goes on to say the same mass of calcium carbonate is used in all the experiments and the temperature of the hydrochloric acid in all experiments is 40 degrees celsius and then we have a table there for experiment a b c and then uh, 5.1.1 says for this investigation write down the dependent variable so if you read the question again you will realize that it says uh, used to investigate one of the factors that affect reaction rate so the dependent variable here is the reaction rate because it's what we are investigating right the factors that affect the reaction rate and then 5.1.2 says uh, what is the independent variable so independent variable is more like what are we changing to investigate that which we are investigating if you look at our table in experiment a we used a uh, granules for calcium carbonate and then for experiment b we used the lumps and for experiment c we used a powder right so uh, the independent variable here is the surface area because it's what we change in to uh, determine its effect on reaction rate and then it goes on to say um the carbon dioxide gas co2 produced during experiment a is collected in a gas syringe the volume of gas is collected uh the volume of gas collected is measured every 20 seconds and the result obtained as shown in the diagram below and then we can see the diagram clearly and then we have 5.2 and 5.2.1 5.2.1 says um, what can be deduced from the graph regarding the rate of the reaction during the time interval and then for 5.2.1 we have 20 seconds to 40 seconds so let's go and look at this time interval so from 20 uh, to 40 uh, it starts flattening out right it's not really flat but it's no longer as steep as from 0 to 20 so we can see that reactants um, are getting used up right are getting used up and then as a consequence uh, the reaction rate is decreasing and then 5.3 says calculate the average rate in centimeter cube uh, per second at which co2 is produced in the experiment so for co2 we are given the volume right so our reaction rate will be the change in the volume divided by the change in time and then we want the average so when we want the average we have to consider the entire time interval if it says between 20 and 40 then we just use the interval 20 and 40 but then it said the average so we have to use the entire interval so we're gonna have volume final minus volume initial equals to t final minus t initial so what is the volume final the volume final is 500 centimeter cube right so we're gonna have 500 minus by zero because initially it was zero right and then uh, we're gonna divide that by t final which is 60 seconds and then minus uh, zero seconds or second so to say uh, so let me just patch that in my calculator so we have 500 divided by 60 uh, in a way which is 8.33 uh, recurring centimeter cube per second 
and then we are done and then we can move to 5.4 which says how will the volume of co2 produced in experiment b compared to that produced in experiment a choose uh, from greater than smaller than or equal to this is a tricky question because let's look at experiment a and experiment b right so we have the same volume of uh, hcl uh, for a and b same concentration of hcl and then instead of granules uh, they're using uh, lumps right so the reaction rates will be different of these two reactions but then at the end of the day the volume of co2 at the end will be the same because it is said that uh, they use the same mass right so for one reaction uh, to be more precise uh, experiment a uh, it will complete quicker than experiment b but then at the end of the day they're gonna uh, produce the same amount of co2 so the answer is equal to right and then we can move on to 5.5 5.5 says a graph is now drawn for experiment c on the same set of axes how will the gradient of this graph compare to the gradient of the graph for experiment a so this is experiment a right and then this is the graph and they use uh, granules so experiment c is powder so we expect in experiment c uh, to shoot up also right let me use a thinner line to also shoot up uh, but then the reaction ends quicker uh, compared to um experiment experiment a where they're using granules so uh, our question is asking us about the gradient so we're gonna say that uh the gradient uh will be greater than right we sound a bit weird it will be greater than in value but it's not very scientific it's the gradient will be steeper yeah but then well that's what they want from us so it's greater than and they're saying that let's back it up using the collision theory so again experiment c is powder right and experiment a is granules so basically in experiment c there is more surface area and as a result of more surface area we have more particles that are exposed and then we'll have more effective collisions per unit time and as a consequence the reaction rate will increase right and then now we can move to 5.6 which says assume that the molar gas volume of Oh, at 40 degrees celsius is 25.7 decimeter cube per mole calculate the mass of CaCO3 used in experiment one so the information we have uh, is information about co2 right so if we determine the number of moles of co2 then we will use the balancing coefficients to determine the number of moles of uh, calcium carbonate and ultimately uh, calculate uh, the mass right so we can say the number of moles of co2 is equal to the volume divided by the molar gas volume so what is the volume of co2 uh, let's check it's 500 centimeter cube right so we're gonna say 500 divided by a thousand converting to decimeter cube uh, divided by divided by what by 20 5.7 like uh, we are told so we have uh, 0 0.5 basically divided by 25.7 which is equal to 0 0.019454 uh, for six actually uh, moles so now uh, let's go to our equation so now we can see that uh, the number of moles of co2 will be equal to the number of moles of uh, calcium carbonate right because the balancing coefficients are the same so this will be 0 0.01946 so the mass will there be for the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass so we have 0 0.01946 multiplied by 100 um, this will give you 1.946 grams 